Well, good morning and uh, happy Naked Gardening Day to everybody who's watching. It's an actual thing. I haven't just made, uh, made that up. It is actually Naked Gardening Day. So uh, I normally request that you send me photos of what you're up to in the garden this weekend. But if that's what you're engaging in, please don't send any photos on Facebook. Uh, it is wash, mow and go today with Yard Force. My name's Tommy Cross, I'm a landscaper. I'm fortunate enough to work alongside Yard Force and I've got a great opportunity today to show you some of the tools that you might not know that they had in their arsenal and that is pressure washing. Before we get into business, you do have an opportunity to win one of these incredible compact pressure washers from Yard Force and I'll be talking about the specs and the details of that very very shortly but all you need to do hidden somewhere written somewhere on this set is the word win. I don't know where it could be. Shout out when you see it. It's if you thought the Easter egg was hard to find, this is a real tough test. So the word win, I don't know. It possibly, I don't know. You have to. You guys shout out when you see it. Um, but today I'm going to be demonstrating the compact pressure washer from Yard Force. Striking in its appearance, not only because that bright, vivid orange Yard Force or uh, the Yard Force orange. It's how compact it is, how different it looks. Most pressure washers are the size in uh, size of check-in luggage. This is more carry-on size. It's less than 50 centimeters wide, just shy of uh, just over sorry 30 centimeters deep. It's got a carry handle and wheels on the bottom here, and it's got two ports for the lance to attach in, as well as an integrated detergent chamber. So what that means is it means that you can fill the detergent in here, so you can soak and lather up your car, your caravan, your boat, your camper wagon, your bike, your wheelbarrow, whatever it is you want to clean, and then you can switch automatically onto cleaning down. So you can soap and lather, then you can rinse and clean. It's incredibly powerful with two detachable heads using a bayonet fitting, and I'll show you how to use all those features shortly. All you need to do is rotate, detach, and you can move from your Vario fan nozzle to your turbo output as well. So that's great for getting rid of things like your lichen, or the green algae that builds up. And again, I'll be showing you all these in action shortly. But you have an opportunity to win one of these today. It packs over 100 bar of cleaning pressure. All you need to do is attach it to a, a garden hose pipe here at the front, and off you go. You're, re you're ready to start cleaning with yard force. And to win, all you need to do is shout out when you see the word win. So, I've taken this off road in preparation for today's video I've given it as much of a tough time as I can if this is what your car looks like then you'll be crying out for a pressure washer and it's not just the aesthetic benefit of cleaning which makes a difference there's also practical implications of cleaning as well so I mentioned I can go from soaking to soaping using this system using the very own nozzle at the top here, all I need to do is rotate down towards the minus section here and what that will do is reduce the pressure and that's going to work intuitively with the motor and now I can start lathering up using my detergent so you can see those bubbles starting to build and that detergent is going to get to work on my truck and make my life much easier. I don't need to do this because I've got the power to blast off even more you know, stuff on mud but if you've got a car shampoo or a universal detergent you want to use, all you need to do is open this cap here, pour it in, and as you saw, once I reduce the pressure on the top here, it's going to automatically dispense my detergent. Ramp it back up, again, clearly embossed on the top here. I'm going from minus to positive here, so I'm going up to the highest possible pressure, and now, I'll get a little residual amount of the detergent comes through and I'm cleaning now solely with high pressure water. Now I must confess I'm a typical bloke. I'm never happier than when I've got a beer or pressure washer in my hand. This is one of those jobs that I don't have to be kicked and harangued to go and do. This is one of those jobs I'll happily, gleefully go out and do. 
and I think there's something slightly addictive with pressure washing and shout out if you feel the same I think once you start one job you start looking for another so once you clean the car Once you finish the car, you start looking around. It could be the driveway surface, it could just be something like the wheelie bins need a bit of care and attention, a little bit of TLC. There is something I think really therapeutic about doing this, and it's the almost kind of the instant gratification of cleaning something and restoring back to its former glory. I mentioned it's not just the aesthetic benefits of cleaning. I've had a lot of questions about how to keep your decking, how to keep your woodwork clean, how do I go about looking after and improving the longe uh, longevity of timber. It could be that you've got timber garden furniture in your garden that you want to look after. You can clean that using a pressure washer. I mean, the, the school of thought is you want to make sure that you're not getting too close and putting too much pressure on the surface of the wood. That's why having that, that spread out fan it's very, very useful. It's powerful, but it's not going to destroy the surface of the timber. Now, if you've got decking, as a landscaper, I would urge you to clean it at least twice a year, at the start of the season and at the end of the season. And if you can, invest some time in oiling the surface and maybe putting a stain on or a paint, but do so in dry weather and always, no matter what you're using, whether it's an oil-based uh, uh, oil product or a paint-based product, always read the manufacturer's guidelines and follow those to the letter but firstly you need to make sure the surface is, in, uh, is clean now over the winter months decking gets trodden over the leaves uh, the leaf fall that ends up on the grooves and in the surface of the timber that starts breaking down and that's when it starts building up and forming all that kind of surface detritus left on the surface of your wood that's going to start destroying the integrity of the timber by cleaning it Remember, keep it on the fan setting, don't go too close. All you want to do is blast the surface of the timber. And you can see I'm keeping it at a reasonable distance from about 8 to 10 inches away from the surface. That way I'm removing the surface detritus, all that muck in all the dirt deposits that have built up over the winter months. And what you're also doing is opening the pores of the timber. So once it has had time to dry, that's a great opportunity then to invest a little bit of time and upkeep in oiling the surface of your decking. That's going to improve the, the structural integrity. It's going to improve the traction underneath your feet so you're not going to get sliding off. Once the algae builds up, it will form a, a very slippy surface. Get rid of that, restore, rejuvenate, and your timber surfaces, whether it's your garden furniture, whether it's your decking, your fencing, your pergolas will last for much, much longer and they're not going to be subject to all that winter distress. Now if anyone's just joined us, don't forget you have an opportunity to win one of the compact pressure washers. All you need to do is find the word win. It's hidden here somewhere today. I can possibly tell you where it is. Um, but if you do see it, shout out. Don't forget, this is all about wash, mow and go. Because a lot of us are familiar with the fantastic range of lawn mowers that Yard Force have, but not many of us may have come across the incredible pressure washer ranges that Yard Force has. And just like the, uh, the lawn mowers, there is no compromise in attention to detail. So I'm gonna use now as an opportunity just to show you a couple of the Yard Force pressure washers. They have got a bit blasted in dirt because they've been busy this morning. But what's so different, what's so unique about them? Well, this is how we'd normally picture a pressure washer. It's practical, it's durable. We've got the wheels on the side here. It's a stand-up pressure washer. A very kind of conventional design. Yard Force went one further because not, not, not many of us have 
vast amounts of space in the house. If your house is like mine, it's bursting at the seams, especially with kids' toys and garden paraphernalia and things just, just thrown in the garage or the shed to be forgotten about, we don't tend to have much space. So having something as compact as this, without the compromise on performance, means I'm getting the best of both worlds. I'm getting the power, I'm getting over 100 bar of cleaning power, but everything's been thought about with this. It's been designed by British design engineers. We've got the two lance ports at the front here. To attach the lance, it's a bayonet fitting. All I need to do is align it, twist it, and it's locked in. To detach, just do the same thing in reverse. And now my lance has got a pur purposeful place to go. On off button, the integrated detergent chamber means I can soak and soak as well as wash and rinse. I've got my cable neatly, discreetly packed at the back here. And then I've got my port at the back for my six meters of high pressure hose. And I can also put my uh, attachments in the bottom here as well as if I want to. Remember it comes with a turbo attachment and it also comes with that fan jet attachment as well. Over a hundred bar of power coming out of something compact and neat and tidy as that. So whether you're looking to clean your car, your caravan, your camper wagon, whether you just want to go and blitz the patio, you've got the power to do so without having to forsake storage space, which is, I think, a premium in any, any household. Now, I'm going to go from one attachment to the other here. Again, all it is, twist and turn using that bayonet feet, uh, fitting. So there's my fan attachment there. You saw me cleaning timber with that. What about things that have got green and algae ridden over the winter months? I'm talking about pots, I'm talking about your patio, I'm talking about things that have just built up with detritus over the years that perhaps you've forgotten about. It could be garden ornaments. That's where you want your turbo attachment. And I go right down the driveway surface here. So I've driven over this mud. This has been allowed a good couple of days to just sit and fester. You can then blast the surface of your driveway, your patio, it could be garden furniture, it could be pots that you want to restore, you've got the scope to blast away, concentrate it, find warm dirt, and give everything a new lease of life. Not only are you kind of improving the aesthetic benefits of something when you're cleaning it, you're improving the longevity of it. Cleaning your car is almost essential, especially after the winter months. Come the summer as well, you get a lot of blossom finding its way onto the surface of your car. If you live in an area with, uh, with larger trees, I don't need to tell you, but the birds will do what they do, and that's going to smear all over the windscreen, the bonnet, back of the car, and that can start damaging the paintwork. So it's, great, it's a great way to be able to keep your car clean and tidy in the convenience of your own home. Pots. Now again, it's a great time to get out and pot in the garden. So if your pots are looking a little bit weather beaten, you can start grafting those back into the least of life that they deserve. You don't want your pots looking happy and shabby. And simultaneously, if you've got livestock, if you've got animals in the back of the garden, give their home a little bit of care and attention, a little bit of love, and clear their crown. Keep it hygienically clean. It's a bit like me. Guaranteeing on one thing, if you've got animals, they like to leave a mess. So do the kids as well. And we've lost so many of us going back out into the garden, the weather's improving. Give the kids toys, play frames. It's all about giving things a new lease of life and improving the longevity of things as well as the aesthetic property as well. Get everything looking spick and span for the spring. So there's our pressure washer in action. Remember again if you see the word win don't forget to shout it out. Now I dare say it could be the last opportunity to spot that. So I'm going to change again from one system to another. There was my turbo nozzle. I'm going to go back to my Vario nozzle and this is going to allow me to go from a low setting using my detergent
turn up the power remember and now I can go from soaping to soaking Day cleaning things. It's just some. It's like a bit of gardening therapy. Right. I think we've done our fair share of washing. So let's go from wash to mow, and I'll see you up on the lawn. question time and we've had a raft of questions and I really appreciate all the questions if I don't get to answering your question today I'll do it over the course of the bank holiday weekend so don't be um, don't be worried we haven't forgotten about you it's just that we have had so many questions after the back of our last Facebook live video so we're really grateful for all your feedback and all your questions and I promise you scouts honor that I will come back to you over the course of the weekend so we've had a question from Caroline Parker what is the best dog friendly weed killer for my patio and garden path? It's driving me nuts at the moment. Now Yard Force have teamed up with Richard Jackson who does a fantastic range of garden feeds both for the lawn and remember if you do purchase a Yard Force tool over the weekend if you go on Amazon you'll get up to 10% discount over the course of the bank holiday weekend. So a fantastic time to buy a new lawnmower or pressure washer as you saw me using earlier on. If you buy any lawnmower, you're also going to get some of Richard Jackson's lawn feed as well. It's a premier feed for your lawn, and that's coming free with each of the Yard Force lawnmowers that's, uh, that you purchase over the weekend. Um, so, in answer to the weed killer, I would definitely recommend having a look at Richard Jackson's. It's based on a naturally occurring ingredient. It's um, an extract from the geranium plant, and it's been designed to be both child-friendly and pet-friendly as well. So, it's going to get rid of those weeds that are causing you nuisance. But it's not going to uh, uh, can cause any harm to children or any animals that are going out into the garden environment. It's also great over the bank holiday weekend to kind of have a look and make sure when you are in the garden, go equipped. And what I mean by that, make sure you're ready to pluck out any weeds that are starting to establish. Do that manually and that will save you having to go back in and spray it. The quicker you can get on top of the weed and remove it physically, the less chance there is for it to start establishing and bring its friends with, with it. Um, how can I improve the soil quality? That came from Cara at Jammy Jigsaw. Um, soil quality is an essential component for any success in the garden. Whether you've got dry, arid, kind of clay soil, whether you've got stony soil, whether you're in a new build, and let's face it, new builds tend to be the worst in terms of soil integrity. The more time you can spend in the garden investing in soil integrity, the better whatever you plant in it is going to look. And what I mean by soil integrity is the composition of nutrients, the drainage, but also the general kind of quality and feel of the soil, the tactile properties. So in order to, um, to get the best out of your soil, you want to make sure you get some compost turned into, into it as soon as you can. You can do that manually, or you could do that mechanically using something like a rotavator or a tiller. You want to aerate the soil as well. And I'm sorry to say that's going to involve some kind of grunt work is going to involve digging and turning over aerating it what I mean by that is getting oxygen into the soil and you want it to be as free draining as possible so if you're in areas of heavy clay if you're in areas where you've got some water logging uh, uh, water logging occurring you want to turn in some horticultural grit or some washed building or grit sand it has to be washed because a lot of the building sand 
um, or sharp sand that comes from you're making a DIY trade outlet that so has quite a lot of salt in it. So you want to make sure you get washed, sharp or grit sand. And you can get that from most horticultural suppliers. By doing that, you'll improve the integrity of the soil and that's going to give you better looking plants. Uh, we've had a message from Susanna. What's the best pet and environment friendly way to stop those darn weeds coming up through the gravel? It's a never ending battle. Now, you heard me talking about Richard Jackson's uh, naturally based alternative to weed killers again it's based on the, an extract from the geranium plant so it's pet friendly and child friendly but you could go one step further if you've got areas of gravel which are blighted by pesky weeds dandelions chickweed herb robert all those kind of things pull the gravel away i'm sorry gardening is a labor intensive exercise i'm sorry to say that but the more effort you impart the better results you're going to get pull the gravel away expose the ground then lay a weed membrane, a good heavy duty weed membrane, then reinstate the gravel. But before you do, wash the gravel down. What the weeds rely on is something to bind into. All that detritus that makes its way to the bottom of the gravel is, or on the surface of the gravel is what the weeds are locking into. And that's where the root structure is going. All the leaves that fall on top of the gravel disintegrate, they break down over the winter and spring months and they form a rich kind of fertile matter in between your gravel. That's why they start appearing so rapidly and so vehemently because they've got some nutrients in and amongst that gravel surface. The cleaner you can keep the gravel, the more protection under the surface that gravel you put in, the less weeds you're going to have. Sadly, at some point, it's inevitable a weed is going to make its way into your garden. They just, they outfox every every single time no matter how determined a garden you are the biggest nemesis you're going to have is the pesky weed but hopefully there's a couple of tips there to uh, eradicate them or at least try and stop them in their tracks uh, what's the best way to eliminate moss and discoloration uh, from my patio tile grout now you saw me using the pressure washer earlier on so it's a great way to start cleaning the broad surface areas but when it gets down to the mortar whether you've got a mortar or polymeric pointing joint. So what I mean by polymeric is a lot of there's a lot of um, products on the market now that are replacing the need for mortar pointing, and they are kind of resin based or polymeric based. So whether you've either got the conventional mortar joint or the resin base, always avoid concentrated jets of pressure cleaning on your mortar joints. Clean the bulk of the patio surface, but ease up around the mortar joints. I would do that manually if possible or you can do it chemically. There's a great product on the marketplace called Wet and Forget. So once you've cleaned your patio using your pressure wash that you saw earlier on from Yard Force, once you've done that, you can apply a product called Wet and Forget or an alternative. And that is a chemical based solution that you go over the patio and that's designed not only to tackle the moss and the algae buildup, but it also is one of the only products to my mind that will tackle that black lichen that beds into porous stones like sandstone or York stone notoriously difficult to get rid of almost impossible to get rid of using a pressure washer no matter what type of pressure washer so a chemical substance like that make sure if you do have pets or animals that you keep them well uh, well away also young children once you're applying the surface it normally needs, needs around about 24 hours to get work uh, get to work once it's had 24 hours outside on a dry day you should start seeing results so hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, a way to tackle that uh, we've had Carly Shepherd. What's the best grass seed to use? And there's, there's a variety of answers I could give to that. It all depends on what the composition your ground's like. It all depends on how much preparation's gone into the ground. The one thing I would suggest, uh, most of the main DIY or garden outlets will always point you in the right place for the seed that you need. If you've got an area which is north facing or shade, you might need a thicker kind of rye grass, something that's much more durable. Again, if you've got young children playing on the garden, you want a thicker, gra uh, thicker base grass as well. But generally, rule of thumb, most of the universal grass seeds available from a decent horticultural supply shop or a decent garden centre will stand up to most of the demands of uh, the British garden. Uh, who we've got? Kendall. Best way to keep cats from spoiling my garden that won't harm them or my dog. So, cats. They're great if they're yours, not so great if they're the next door neighbours and they like to do what they do in your garden. Uh, I've suffered the same issue with my neighbour's cat. We love the cat to pieces, not so fond of when it leaves behind when it's been playing around in the garden. I've used it and it did work. 
if you go to a coffee shop and ask them for their expired coffee granules, smother those on the surface of your borders and beds, the cats don't like them. I don't know whether it's the smell or whether it's a pheromone that they exert after use, but the cats certainly do not like them. We haven't got rid of the problem entirely, but we seem to get less presence from our neighbors uh, and the neighborhood cats in our garden as a result of using them. It was recommended to me, I tried it, it's worked for me. If you use it or if uh, you guys are watching and you, get, you intend on using it, I'd love to hear your feedback. There is a product in the States, which I came across, which is uh, coyote or coyote urine. And apparently, you can, you can Google this, apparently it works. A lot of the people in the States use it to stop raccoons coming into their garden. Apparently it's pheromone rich, pretty nasty smelling stuff that can be sprayed around the perimeter of your garden. Once it's sprayed and the smell disappears, it lingers that only the animals can smell it because they have a much better sense of smell than, than we do. And the pheromone it exerts apparently keeps off any other, any other animal coming into the garden. It's supposed to be natural, it's supposed to work incredibly well, but it might be one for, for you to, to do a Google search on first. So we're going to go back through some of the other questions as well. We've had a question from, who have we got? Uh, Joe Wells. We keep digging up a flower bed that we want to use and we wondered whether you've got any tips to keep weeds away before we spend a lot on new plants. Again, preparation is key. As a gardener, you're always going to be up against it with weeds. I'm sorry, there's not a panacea yet that is going to keep weeds at bay. They're airborne. They're clever, like the Royal Marines. You'll go to bed one night and they've made their way into your garden taking over before you could even blink. So preparation is vital. If you want to get the border as manicured as possible, make sure you map out what you want to plant first. So I'd be prepared to buy the plants first and foremost. Then lay out some geotextile membrane or decent black weed membrane over the surface. Mark out where you want your pots and your new plants to go make a cross incision, pull the membrane back, dig the hole, remove the soil from the bed. You don't want any soil going on top of the membrane. Then plant your new plant with a little bit of compost, fold back the membrane around the root base of the plant and repeat that across the border in the bed. So you get your plants potted up, uh, plants planted out, the geotextile membrane will act as a surface layer. You can then go one better and then finish off the area using bark chippings. Now I know not everyone loves bark chippings or uh, decorative bark, but it is a really fantastic weed suppressant. It starves any of the surface area of light. It does break down over time, so be prepared to invest in um, replenishing it by buying some new bark maybe every other year. So that way it'll always look its best. The other way to do it is to finish it off with gravel that's going to weight down the geotextile membrane but remember as i said from earlier on at some point leaf mulch will get into that decorative gravel so the cleaner you can keep that and the more prepared you are to do some spot weeding the better your board is going to look uh what else have we got here kaz what's the best way to attract butterflies into my garden i love this question this is brilliant and a great time of year to get the butterflies into the garden Budlia is a fantastic plant and then a lot of you might cry out it's a weed it's a weed it grows along the railway tracks yes it is I suppose a weed in the wrong place but if you look after it in your garden especially the variegated versions of Budlia it's very inexpensive to purchase you could even take a cutting or uplift a plant from your neighbor's gardens if they have it get it into your garden those long conical plumes of bright pinks and purples and whites are fantastic ways of attracting butterflies. Ceanothus is another one which is out at this time of year. Big plumes of lilac blues and purples. Butterflies adore those. Um, Wisteria is another one as well that butterflies are attracted to. Anything which is generously flowering, you are going to attract wildlife into your garden with. But a budlia, I think, is, is the go-to plant for a butterfly because as a landscaper, it's inexpensive, inexpensive to buy, incredibly easy to look after. You can lop it back as brutally as you like, year after year, and that's only going to encourage new growth the following year. So I hope that's a, a quick way for you to get some butterflies into the garden. Who else have we got? We've got Kano, Kano Midget. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's their real name or if that's their username. How do I get rid of moss in the lawn? I live in a damp area and it keeps coming back. Moss is 
as you saw from, have you seen the weed feed and seed video? It tends to be the biggest problem that most people face on their lawn. And it's a stark sign of a, a lawn which is in decline. Again, it's labor heavy if you want to do it, but it's worth doing. Grab yourself a spring tine rake. You rake the surface of your lawn. You're gonna pull out the moss only. And don't be worried if your lawn starts looking a bit barren, a bit beaten, a bit bare. That's only going to open up scope for the new lawn to develop. So you can see even here, and this is a well tended to lawn, I've got a good handful of moss which has come out of this. So whether you want to do it manually, you could do it mechanically using a scarifier. You could hire one of those from a, a, a decent hire shop. That's going to do essentially what I've just been doing with a rake. Or you can do it chemically using sulfate of iron or an iron rich moss killer. All of those are going to leave your lawn looking slightly beaten and battered, but it's what you do after which is going to make the difference. So you then want to top dress it or you want to re, um, redress it using something like a root zone soil. That's a 60% sand soil topsoil designed to assist with the growth of new plants, new leaf, sorry, new grass plants. Once you've seeded, Allow the grass to develop and grow and mature, and then you want to keep feeding it to improve the health of the lawn. And you can grab some of the, fan, uh, the fantastic lawn feed from Richard Jackson at Yard Force. So that's Richard Jackson's Lawn Magic. It's a nitrogen rich lawn feed, which is a great way to keep your lawn looking great all year long. So, hopefully, Kerno Midget, I love the name by the way, uh, hopefully that answers your question. We also have another question as well How do I get weeds? Uh, how do I get rid of weeds in my garden? My garden is full of dandelions. That's from Jacqueline Rochford. Jacqueline, this year especially, I have noticed a vast array of gardens devastated by dandelions. They are growing everywhere. They're growing rapidly. So I can feel your pain on that front. Again, it's all about getting out and being busy. It's all about spotting them as early as you can do and getting rid of the entire plant. Now you can do that manually. I and mean, you saw me throwing around one of these earlier on. This is a narrow trowel. What this means is I can dig into and around a dandelion plant or a weed, get right down below the root structure, cut it out and remove it from the lawn. It's gonna be less of a mess than a larger, broader hand trowel. And it's also gonna get rid of that, uh, that weed root system as well that's the most important thing is killing off the root system again you could use a selective weed killer if they're devastating your lawn make sure it is a selective weed killer not a general weed killer what i mean by a selective weed killer is that it selects only a weed not the lawn itself i've heard so many horror stories of people going out with a general weed killer and they're left with half a lawn because it's killed not only the weed it's also killed the lawn it's the last thing you want to do um, we're over on to the Facebook questions. I'm sorry guys that I'm trying to race through these as quick as I can, but you have asked so many, which which is a great thing, and, and keep them coming, please do. I'm gonna spend the best part of this weekend getting through those. Anyone who I missed, I apologize to, but I'm gonna try and answer every single question. Susanna Callaghan, what's the best pet and friendly environment, environmental and friendly way to stop those weeds? Hopefully I answered that earlier on. Richard Jackson's geranium extract based weed killer is a fantastic way to get rid of those. Claire Woodfall Infant, she asked a question on the earlier feed and uh, she's also just put up a message. We just moved to a new home and removed a pond. What is the best way to fill it? That's a great question. And so many people, and as a landscaper, I've gone to, her, um, to gardens previously and you can almost tell straight away that there's been a pond at some point because the footprint seems to stay. The ground has collapsed over time and is a dead giveaway that there's been a pond which has been poorly filled with the wrong material. Don't just go and throw topsoil in because that won't compact as well as building it up in layers will. And it'll be a dead giveaway in a year or so's time when you've thrown all that topsoil in and it's slowly leveled and compacted and the lawn just undulates or the area where the pond was undulates lower than you, than you thought it would end up. So I would fill it in increments. I would get a free draining material, maybe a clean limestone, and build up the base layer, a good 30 centimeters of that. So that's free draining material right below the surface. Then I'd get some sharp sand, some washed sharp sand, compact that on top. But before I do that, I'd put a, a, a porous membrane in first above the, cross, uh, above the clean limestone. So it's all about building up almost like in a sandwich layer. We've got our larger profile limestone at the bottom, 
then some free draining sand then you want to put your topsoil on top so build it up in layers that way you're going to ensure that the ground isn't going to drop over time and it's also going to be free draining make sure if you do want to plant that you put a generous amount of topsoil at the top so that you can turn it into a border or bed and it's got enough nutrition uh, nutritious uh, matter in there to accommodate root structures my cambler i have pressure washed my patio uh, before but struggle getting rid of the algae off the walls what product can i use as a treatment well you saw me using the pressure washer earlier on you can remember you can uh, use a universal detergent with that pressure washer all you need to do is pour it into the top and you can dispense that out across the surface that should hopefully allow you to then get rid of the algae on the surface and then give it a soaping and a soaking if that doesn't work i mentioned some of the chemical alternatives to pressure washing or once you have pressure washed you can use those something like wet and forget is a great way for getting rid of algae and lichen karate towers we've got lots of moss on our lawn is that a problem yes sorry <laughs> it's a brutal answer yes it, it, it is a bit a kind of an obvious sign that the lawn is in decline and it needs a bit of improving I mentioned in an earlier question three ways to do it you can manually remove the moss using a spring tine rake you can mechanically use it using a scarifier or then you could use a chemical alternative which is an iron rich compound which is going to kill solely the moss it will turn the moss black whatever whatever application you use be prepared for a little bit of time and investment afterwards to make good the ground so once you have got rid of the moss make sure you then top dress seed or you could even lay turf if it is entirely blotted by moss it might be a case of then just restarting your lawn from scratch tommy what can you use to remove moss from um walls a uh, pressure washer would take oh sorry from hard walls a pressure washer would take off the harling too uh colin can i come back to that one because i have to look at the word harling on that so um hands up on that one i'll come back to you on a private message with that is it safe to pressure wash windows as i'm desperate in need of eliminating some crazy cobwebs it's on a high up window uh that my daughter sorry produces also any tips on how to grow back the grass that has died under mats that my daughter had down or would you recommend turf instead so that's from amber ledner of course you can use a pressure washer in a window but make sure you try and stay away from the sills as much as possible now if you've got sash windows or if you've got single pane windows i would definitely recommend that you avoid using a pressure washer on those um, they would want kind of manual cleaning on a double sand or double glazing patio doors and windows absolutely fine to do so but try not to get concentrated jets of water in and around the sills to avoid any scope of any damage to those so the border area of the window absolutely fine to clean any tips on how to grow back grass that has died under mats a little bit of time and a little bit of feed remember richard jackson's law of magic that i mentioned earlier on that's a great way to rejuvenate the root structure of the plant the root structure is the most important part of any plant same when it comes to the grass in our lawn a lot of people forget that that's actually a, a plant itself we seem to think that our plants and our patio pots need the feeding the lawn needs to feed just as much as the rest of the garden so don't be fooled in thinking that a little bit of water is going to look after your lawn you've got to keep it fed look for a nitrogen rich feed if you can and i can't recommend higher than richard jackson's lawn magic remember that comes included with any of the law of any of the lawnmowers that you buy from yard force uh colin walker uh you've already been in touch fantastic <laughs> he's already spotted it um karen smith i find it hard to keep slabs clean neighbors have a large tree that leaves a gum like substance on my slabs they have a tendency to go black i never get them completely clean we have an old pressure washer that leaks and it's on its last leg so an updated version would be helpful can't get more updated than the yard force pressure washer so hopefully you've uh, you've watched early on and posted win to be with a chance of winning don't forget if you don't uh, if you didn't spot it or if you haven't joined in the competition you can always purchase one from, from amazon over the bank holiday weekend where you'll get a minimum of 10 percent discount online uh, how to keep your uh, paving clean so if you have got neighboring plants that leave uh, especially this time of year blossom magnolia grandiflora leaves a real thick slimy residue on your paving get out and clean it as soon as you can a lot of people have what's called tunnelith leak onto porous stones so what I mean by that is when the plant breaks down, and you'll find it with things like um, salix, weeping willow, will drop a lot of buds and uh, a lot of leaves onto the surface. When they start breaking down, they leave like a brown stain, especially on porous flags. 
Sadly, you'll have to wait for the light to get rid of that. The UV light will actually get rid of that. It will break down. So don't be alarmed if your new patio has a lot of kind of brown stains. It's just a tunnel lift leaking from the leaves. But sadly, that's a very, very difficult thing to get rid of other than letting nature do the work for you. I'm gonna wrap up with one last question before I go and take a bit of time to indulge in naked gardening day. It is an actual thing. I have to keep reminding myself. Uh, so we're gonna go, we're gonna plug one more question. Jodie Stafford, where should I start with my new garden when cats are using my plant pot as a litter tray? So I answered that earlier on, try the coffee granules and I'd love for you guys to try that out because I've had great success. It'd be great to see if it works for you too, whether it isn't just a fluke for me. I did say that was the last question, but I'll give one more. Um, George Hirrell, I have a backyard that will not let my Bichon freeze out in because it's full of black moss and this would be perfect for cleaning it. So black moss, black lichen, I mentioned earlier on, very difficult to get rid of the black lichen in sandstone. Black moss you'd be able to blast away. Moss isn't a problem for a pressure washer, but the lichen that builds up in the sedimentary layers of a porous stone, I'd use something like a chemical agent, something like wet and forget or something along those lines, which you apply, you leave for 24 hours, keep the animals, pets, children, big children indoors for 24 hours, then it gets to work on a dry day and over time that will get rid of the lichen. But the first step to getting your patio looking pristine is to power wash it and you can do so remember with the R-Force because not only do we wash, not only do we mow, but now I get to go. Now I'm going to go and invest my time in a bit of National Naked Gardening Day so hopefully see you guys soon. <laughs>